Okay, I am live. Welcome everybody. This is a special edition of the Jelly Roll Club. This is a bonus quilt we're making. This is not the normal quilt that we make uh, throughout the year. This is a special project. It was inspired by one of the Jelly Roll Club members. Her name is Rachel. And uh, I was making a block. Um, actually, it was the Friendship Star. And uh, she suggested that we could supersize the Friendship Star. And this is my little guy. And uh, she said, what would it be like if we supersized it and made the circle of friends into a giant quilt? So I followed um, her lead and I took to making a little bit of math and I went into my fabric design software and I created a supersized star block for you guys to make. So today is the first episode. I will do updates throughout the year. I'm gonna show you how to break down this pattern how to get calculations using a special calculator that I want everyone to know about, and we're ready to get started. All right, say hello to each other in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Hit the subscribe button so that you can join the chat. You can see the links, and I always leave the chat replay for you guys to go back and find that later. But hi, everybody. I hope it's sunny where you're at. Um, we were supposed to do this last week, but unfortunately my little grandbaby was very, very sick. She had a very bad case of strep, and so I had to take her to the doctor, and so we had to push this out by a week, but here we are. All right, so let me switch the camera view so you can see what we're doing. Um, if you look in the chat, there's a link at the very top for this handout, and it's called the Superstar um, Quilt, and it is a finished size. The biggest one you could make is 102 by 102, and the yardage that you see right here is for a king size quilt. So if you're making a king size quilt, you're gonna need six yards of background fabric. And let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. You're gonna need six yards of background fabric. You guys can see right there. You make that super big so you can see it. Three quarters of a yard of a smaller uh, inner border. So if you want to do that little skinny inner border, um, you need three quarters of a yard for that. You need one and a fourth of a yard for an outer border. It's an optional outer border. You don't have to do this big one, but if you want to, you can. Five eighths of a yard for each of the large friendship stars. And uh, you are gonna need those to be width of fabric cuts that are 23 inches. So that means 23 inches by width of fabric in order to, to get the king size uh, quilt out of that. But what happens a lot of times is people will get a pattern and sometimes it's only available in a lap size or a full size and it's not available in other sizes. And so what do you do when that happens? Um, one of my favorite things to do, um, this one comes in different size blocks, is to go to an online quilt calculator. And so if you scroll through this pattern, it's going to show you how many pieces you need, right? So. Finished size blocks are 10 inches, it tells you. Um, this one is nine for the queen. You need blocks that are finished eight inches and that is after they are sewn into the quilt. For the lap, you're gonna need seven. And that's the smallest size I would do because otherwise the little mini stars inside get too little and then those are hard to make. And so it shows you a cutting chart of how you're gonna cut those, right? And so it says, cut two squares, 11 and a half inches. And so if you want to calculate, what would I need if I needed uh, squares of a different size? So I would look on this chart and I would say, okay, I want a full size quilt and my blocks are going to be eight inches. So you go to this online quilt, quilt calculator by Quilters Paradise. And this is a free calculator that any quilter can use. And it has all kinds of calculators on this website. You can measure backing and, and batting. You can do a binding calculator. You can do border yardage calculations, and you can actually design your own quilt by using graph paper and this online calculator. So let's just say that I wanna use pieces to yardage, determine how much fabric I need given a number uh, that I'm gonna use. So the width of fabric that I'm gonna use is default 43 inches, that's fine. But if I wanna cut my pieces to be eight and a half inches, right? And so I'm gonna uh, put my width is, uh, nine, just to be sure, by nine, to give myself some room for mistakes. 
And if I enter the number of pieces that I want for a particular quilt, then I'm gonna enter that number, right? And so once I put that number in there, and so let's just say I wanna cut nine by nine, right? That gives me 81 pieces. So I'm gonna put 81 in there and I'm gonna calculate. And it shows me using this little chart over here on the side, how many pieces I can cut. And so what it tells me is that I'm gonna need five and a quarter yards in order to cut pieces that are nine inches by nine inches, right? And so it shows me how to lay out my fabric and it actually shows me how to cut my pieces so that I know that on my pattern, it says, six uh, yards of background fabric. But if I use the calculator, if I'm making a full, I know that I'm only gonna need five and a quarter or five and a half, right? I always buy more than I need. And so I would probably still buy the six yards because that gives me scrap and that gives me waste. And I like to save that. For those of you who only wanna buy the exact amount you need for a quilt, this is a great way to do it. And so using the online quilt calculator is very, very helpful. And so let me move this out of my way. And so let's get started with this pattern. I'm gonna break down the pattern for you. And I'm gonna show you how to cut measurements that are odd because this one has some funky math. So if you look on the pattern, this is what the finished quilt would look like. And so whether it's a lap, a queen, a full, the quilt's gonna look the same. Let me make sure that that's nice and clear. So the quilt's gonna look the same, it's just gonna shrink. So it's a square quilt, okay? If you make the king size, it's 102 by 102. If you make the queen, it's 93 by 93. If you make the full, it's 84 by 84. And if you make a lap, it's 75 by 75. You can always make it taller by adding a, a row of blocks across the bottom and a row of blocks across the top, maybe some log cabins or some other stars. Okay, and I do always buy more than what you need. So let me know in the chat if you're buying exactly what you need or you buy more. I've run into problems buying not enough and so I always buy more than what I need. Okay, so if you're gonna make the king size quilt, you're gonna need to cut your pieces for these half square triangles. You're gonna need to cut squares that are 11 and a half by 11 and a half and you're gonna sew on the diagonal using the two at a time method. And that's how you get those pieces like this, right? Um, for the little tiny star bees, you're gonna cut those to be five inches, and then you're gonna cut two squares of background and you're gonna sew the two at a time method where you draw a line from corner to corner and you sew a quarter inch on either side and cut them apart and straighten them up. Then you have this little measurement that says three and seven eighths inch, cut four squares, and then you're gonna cut one square that's three and seven eighths inch of background fabric for C, right? So you need this one that's in the middle and then you need these four. So you're gonna cut four of one color, which is what it tells you, and then one in the middle, which is that background color. And so reading a pattern is understanding where you're gonna cut and this is why I've labeled the diagram for you. To make every half star, you're gonna use the two at a time method where you're gonna lay them together and you're gonna draw a line and I'm gonna show you how to do that using a, a smaller version of the star. So I'm gonna make the star in the inside for you, which looks kind of like this, right? And it has some other instructions for the mini stars. On the last page of the pattern, you have a coloring diagram because you're gonna need this in order to lay out all your pieces. And then it has a chart which gives you some instructions, and this is super important. If you look at this pattern, I'm gonna be making a full, and I always mark this so that I know what I'm doing, but it tells me what my subunits are. It says unfinished size for each subunit. That means what the sizes need to be before I sew them into the block like this or into the quilt. So unfinished size on a pattern is always the size that your blocks are gonna be before you sew them into the quilt. My finished size 
after I sew them into the quilt for the full is gonna be eight inches. And so whenever you're trimming or looking at a pattern, always understand whether that's an unfinished size or a finished size so that when you're trimming and squaring up, they're the correct size. All right, so mine's gonna be full. That means I'm gonna use eight and a half inch units. So I'm just gonna mark that. And I'm gonna need to cut uh, my units, my subunits for those mini stars, three and an eighth of an inch, which is like a weird or an odd measurement. If you notice, these for the mini stars on the king are three and seven eighths, and then these for the lap are two and seven eighths. And then for the full, it's three and an eighth, and for the, uh, this one, it's three and a half. And so I've provided you with a layout guide because you're gonna need to lay out your quilt in chunks, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I make my two at a time. Most of you guys have seen that and then show you some of the tools I'm gonna to use to make this one. All right, the first tool that I'm gonna need is a special uh, ruler that I use for trimming. And so this is my trimming ruler. Some of you guys may have seen it. This is a vintage little tool here, but it's an eight and a half inch square up ruler. And let me show you what this looks like. And so it has these lines that come across here and I, these are registration marks, and I like this ruler because it's gonna help me cut all of my pieces the same exact size. And so anytime that you're making a project and you have a ruler that's a square up ruler, buy the size that you need. I usually use this one or this one because I make a lot of jelly roll uh, quilts. And so six and a half is three jelly rolls wide, eight and a half is four jelly rolls wide. And so when you sew four jelly rolls together, in a strip set, this one is five, but if you sew four together across the top, it should measure eight and a half inches. So when I lay this down, from this edge to this edge, this measures eight and a half inches, and I know that my seams on this strip of jelly rolls is accurate because it measures eight and a half, right? So that's the first important thing, is I always like to use tools that make my life easier. I need to use an eight and a half inch square up ruler. The other thing I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a six and a half inch square because my little units I need to make with some interesting cuts. So I put a little guide down here and a lot of patterns don't provide that for you, but I gave you a little guide that you need to see. This one shows you how to read the ruler. I always count the little lines so that if I'm cutting like two and seven eighths or three and an eighth, or three and seven eighths, I can see where on my ruler I'm gonna need that. And so if you count your ruler, let me show you what, that, what I mean by that. If you count the little, little tiny lines on the ruler, like right here, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm counting eight total. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this edge is eight. That means these are eighth inch marks on my ruler. And some rulers have smaller marks, but this one I'm lucky because it has eight of them, which means if I'm doing uh, seven eighths, I'm looking at this first little mark on mine. If I'm measuring according to this paper, three and an eighth, that means that when I measure from here over, I'm gonna go three and that first little tiny tick mark. And so what I do oftentimes is I mark that on my ruler just with a regular uh, marker that can be erased. You can mark it with a Sharpie. Um, they have little pieces of mark marking tape that you can use. Or um, one of my favorites is this medical grade clear tape. And then what I do is I literally just mark it on my ruler. So I know that I'm gonna be using this as my measurement. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put right there where that eighth of an inch mark is, and I'm gonna use that little clear piece of tape right there because I know this is where I'm gonna line up my pieces. So if you see that, it's still clear, I can still see through it, and when I'm done, I'm just gonna pull it off. And this is that, um, it's called like medical tape, it's transparent, and you can also use it on the back of your rulers to make them not scooch around. So I know that I'm going to be squaring to three and uh, three and, a, and an eighth. So I'm going to mark this one three and an eighth. And so I'm going to mark it on this side as well. 
And so now when I use my ruler, I have this side marked, this side marked, and then I'm going to go here. It has a little marking already in the corner, so I know that I'm just going to use that middle marking, and I can just pull this tape and pull it off in two little chunks, and I'm going to mark right there this part of my ruler where I'm going to be using this as my measurement. So now that I have this marked and I have these registration marks, now every time I square up those smaller units, I know that they're going to be the same. And so this one is how I'm going to measure my squares. So let's get started. I'm going to make the mini star units. That's the first thing I'm going to start with. And so we're going to do this little middle part on one of the blocks. I'm going to make this little star unit right here in the middle. And that's going to be what I'm going to make. And so for that particular unit, I'm going to pull out my fabric. And I bought way more than what I needed. I bought half yards for this quilt. So you can see this is my fabric that I picked for this particular project. I know, huh? Uh, it's excessive. And I'm going to um, pull from my colors here. I'm going to pull for the first one. So I think I'm going to start with probably this really beautiful teal right here, this aqua. And then for my background fabric, I have this great little fabric here that has these little um, flowers. It's white with a little bit of gray. And so I'm just going to take um, a piece of this fabric and I like ripping my fabric because um, I get a nice straight of grain. And so if you've never ripped your fabric, let me show you what that looks like. So ripping your fabric, yes, I buy my fabric by the bolt, means that I'm gonna take and I'm gonna rip across the grain. And so if you're not used to seeing people do that, I do this all the time, I'm gonna take a little bit bigger than what I need. I'm gonna do nine inches. So I'm gonna take my ruler just like this and I'm going to pull my scissors that are behind me and I'm going to grab this first piece is going to be nine inches because I want eight and a half inches by straight of grain so I'm just going to go nine inches. I'm going to snip into the seam allowance like this and then I'm going to rip. Some people hate ripping fabric. I like it because I get a straight of grain cut and I get less warping and less stretching. So that's it, that's how you cut it. And now I'm gonna press this piece and I'm ready to cut from that first cut, right? So I'm gonna heat up my iron, I'm gonna get my little ironing board and I'm gonna press my very first piece. This fabric on this particular um, bolt is unwashed and I'm okay with that. So let me switch to my two camera views. So now I'm just going to press this and um, because I have more than what I need, I'm going to give it a little bit of a starch and I'm going to straighten it out. As you can see, the print on this particular um, fabric is slightly off grain, which is okay. It's not going to matter because I'm just going to lay those going different directions. But where I've ripped, I want to make sure that that edge is nice and smooth. And sometimes you get those strings when you rip, but I'm okay with that. You just trim those off. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a nice uh, eight and a half inch square that's on the straight of grain, right? All of my background pieces are gonna be eight and a half inches. And if you've ever purchased fabric, a lot of times um, they're not always wound on the bolt straight of grain. And so that ensures that all of my pieces that I'm gonna get out of this cut are straight of grain. And we'll see if they're all eight and a half inches. I'm gonna measure as I go. And that gives me pieces that are at least eight and a half inches. And so I'm just measuring this. And I don't always pre-wash. I'm a pre-wash fan, but sometimes I don't. This particular quilt, I'm not pre-washing any of my fabric. I'm just leaving it as it came because I'm not using anything that's too bright. And I've already tested the little corners of my fabric to make sure that it wasn't bleeding and so I'm okay with not washing this particular fabric. All right. 
All right, let me see if we have any questions. Yes, ripping is an absolute beautiful way to get a straight of grain. Straight of grain is um, when you have your fabric so that it lines up exactly parallel with um, how the fabric was woven. You get the least amount of stretch when you cut your blocks on the straight of grain. A lot of times patterns don't tell you that, where the straight of grain is, but as much as possible, I do try to cut my pieces so they are with the straight of the grain. And the reason I do that is because you end up with uh, much nicer and straighter pieces. Okay, if you are new to quilting, if you ever starch or steam, only do that before you cut. Don't do that afterwards. Um, I always rip my backings, so if I stitch two pieces of fabric together, if I buy 45 inch wide fabric um, and I piece my backing, I always rip so that I get that nice straight of grain and then I sew the ripped edges together so that um, when I'm sewing, I know that I have the least amount of stretch. And if you notice, you have some stretch here and then this is the least amount of stretch if you're parallel to the selvage. So you get almost no stretch. So whenever you cut pieces that you wanna sew with no stretch like log cabins, cut them this way. How do I test for bleeding? I always take a little bit of my fabric and I cut a little corner or a little piece off of my fabric. Um, and then I take a little cup of hot water and um, usually boiling water from the tea kettle and I drop my piece in there and I see if there's any bleed. Um, and so I just take a little corner usually like maybe this much or take a little square or even a little piece and just drop it in the water and um, then you blot it on a white washcloth and if there's nothing coming out of it or very little then you know that it's not going to bleed on you but testing for bleeding is important i always do that because i don't want to be disappointed later on if a fabric bleeds then i pre-wash it and i add a little bit of retain all right so for my first block i'm going to need a units that are three and a quarter and so i'm just going to cut right because that's what my pattern said that my units to make my mini stars are three and a quarter. Because I'm gonna be doing the two at a time, I need to add an inch to that. So I'm gonna cut those units for my mini stars four and a quarter because I'm doing two at a time. And so I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna cut from one end right here. If you've never cut um, with, a ruler that's smaller than what you need. I just take and I push it along an edge. So I'm lining it up here. I'm cutting off the selvage and I'm moving that ruler down and I'm just sliding it. So if you just have a small ruler, you can still cut strips. You just have to be careful. All right, so I'm gonna cut four and a fourth. So on this one, I'm just gonna go right here. And so my ruler has measurements on either side. So I can cut four and a half or four and a fourth if I wanted to flip it this way. Just like that, it says four and a quarter is measured there. And so I'm cutting it this way because I am getting straight of grain pieces that way and I'm just sliding it without lifting my rotary cutter and it's giving me pieces that are four and a fourth. And you just have to get um, in the habit of having good ergonomics I'm gonna trim that straight like this. And then I know my pieces are mostly straight of grain. And then I'm gonna cut my pieces four and a fourth. I'm lining it up with that quarter uh, inch mark and I'm checking all the way down and I'm checking across so that it's straight on two sides. That way I know my piece is very straight. And then I'm gonna check my second piece because we're doing two at a time. And I know that it's straight on two edges, this side and this side. And you could see how off grain that printing was. It was a little bit crooked. So now I have two of these. I'm gonna use these two to make these four pieces, right? And so I'm gonna take some of my beautiful blue, this teal, 
And I bought this uh, online on a website called The Quilting Cat. She had half yard bundles on sale and I love buying fabric online. Some of the fabric that uh, came with this I tested and it did not bleed. So I was happy about that. Okay, because this is not washed, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of starch on both sides. I'm gonna starch the inside. And uh, if a fabric um, doesn't feel too thick when you're um, working with it, um, you can always starch it and give it body. And like I said, this is where you use a nice hot dry iron. I kind of tease it with my fingers, press it nice and hard. Um, I use a wooden board because it has the least amount of give. And so it makes my um, blocks nice and flat. So I always open it up, make sure you don't have creases. I never cut fabric that has not been pressed. Just because you're not gonna get accurate cuts. Sometimes new quilters, they're, they're not sure why their blocks are not coming out um, perfectly uh, the correct size. And a lot of it has to do with pressing and cutting. If you press and cut, then you'll end up with nice um, pieces. If you have an accurate quarter inch seam, then you're in business. All right, so now I'm going to make sure that I have at least four and a quarter inches past that selvage, and I'm gonna go on this side, and I'm gonna cut at least two pieces. So I'm gonna cut this way, and I'm trying to go along the straight of grain with this one. Let me move that out of the way. I'm just cutting extra till I get to the end, and I just kind of slide that ruler. If I want to, I can just pull it apart and rip it with the straight of the grain, and that's okay too. And now if it has a wavy edge, I just straighten it with my fingers, give it a press, and it's ready for me to cut. Never be afraid to rip your fabric. And that shows me right there that I'm following a pretty decent straight of grain. And so now I can move this out of my way and finish trimming. So I'm just gonna fold it in half. I need two pieces that are four and a fourth, so I'm going to come over here. And I have at least enough to trim this way. I'm gonna cut that selvage off. Always cut your selvage off, friends. Don't leave a selvage on there. Then flip it around and measure it from this corner, do a four and a fourth, line it up right here with this line and then this line at four and a fourth. And then I just make sure that I'm trimming on two sides. I normally don't like to waste this much, but sometimes it's okay. I have plenty of this fabric. All right, so now that I have both of those, both the backgrounds, and even if it has a little stray thread, just cut them off. And then I just lay them on top of each other. This is the wrong side, this is the right side. So you're gonna put pretty side to pretty side, or pretty sides touching. And then you're gonna either draw a line or fold this in half. And let me make sure my other camera is turned on. See if my sewing machine camera is showing. And it's not, it was acting up uh, earlier. My sewing machine camera didn't want to register. So I might not flip it over there. All right, so let me just show you like this what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna draw a line on both sides and I usually just use a standard pencil. You can use a colored pencil, but I just use mechanical pencils, nothing fancy because they do a really, really good job. You can take any ruler and line it up corner to corner and draw a line just like this. If you're a new quilter, I suggest you draw the line. If you've been sewing a long time, 
like I have, I simply fold it in half and then I follow the, the folded line. But if you're a new quilter, my suggestion is for you to just always draw that line. And so I'm going to sew this on my sewing machine a quarter inch on both sides. I'll be right back. Like I said, this camera's been acting up lately. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's not having a good time. I don't know. But I'm just going to sew it a quarter in on, on each side, and here I come back. Hang on. Just flip it around every time you sew, line it up with the edge of the foot. And then once you're done, you're ready to cut and press. So let me show you what they look like. All right, so I have both of these. If you notice, I drew the line, then I stitched a quarter of an inch on either side. And this is the two, in a, two at a time method. And then you're just gonna cut these out with scissors. The reason you do that before you, you sew before you cut apart is because this is a bias edge and that's very stretchy. But I'm not so worried about it. I'm just gonna use a pair of plain scissors. I don't like to use my rotary cutter when I'm doing these because sometimes you can get kind of twisted and then all of a sudden you've chopped your blocks. All right. So then you just press, always set your seam before you um, open these because that reduces the um, likelihood that your block is gonna be distorted. It kind of takes those stitches and it shrinks them and sinks them into the fabric and then you're ready to go. So then I'm just going to flip these open. And if you notice, I am not ironing on top of my mat. Don't iron on top of your mat. This has feet and this is made out of wood. So this is not touching my mat directly because otherwise it would warp my mat. So if you see people ironing on their mat, they're going to be sad in, in no time flat. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully take my finger and I'm not gonna stretch it. I'm just gonna go along that seam very carefully and just hold it with my fingers. And then when I press, I'm gonna lay my iron down and I'm not gonna scrub my iron or rotate my iron because that distorts my block and I wanna keep my block straight. So see how that keeps it pretty square. I can nip these bunny ears if I want at this point. Dog ears, bunny ears hangovers, whatever you want to call those things. And these are going to be slightly oversized, right? Because remember, they were supposed to be three and an eighth inch unfinished as I put them into the star. All right, I'm gonna need four of those. And so the two at a time method is a, a pretty good way. You can also do these eight at a time. There's a, a, a method for doing that where you cut one gigantic square and then you draw lines going um, a bunch of different directions. And, and I can show you that method if you really wanna know, but it's not necessary to do it for this particular block. And so I'm gonna press this, and like I said, just flip it like this, and just carefully peel it open with your fingers, just teasing your finger into that seam so that you don't get a pucker, and then lay your iron on it. And I typically just let the iron do the work for me. Um, if you wanna make it very small to hang up, um, then my suggestion is for you to make all of your units uh, two and a half inches. So you can make all of your units two and a half inches, you can make it into a small um, wall size hanging. And it would probably end up being, I'd have to do the math, um, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of like 30 inches. So if you wanna make that uh, what you wanna do, 
Let's see, let me do the math really quick. Um, let's see. You would end up with like a 20 inch friendship star, friendship circle. All right. Uh, I was looking up the history of this block and I found several sources online that says the friendship circle star was often given as a wedding gift. So it was the original wedding ring quilt because people would embroider verses inside the center of those stars. Those stars often had an, an empty middle and people would embroider verses in there or um, say prayers for the couple. And so it was given as a wedding gift and I thought that was so cool. All right, so now that I have all four of these, I have two choices. I can either cut a center for my unit, right, or leave it like this. But because these stars, if you notice, have that middle is the background, then I'm going to cut a background uh, square to go in the middle of, of that unit, okay? And so I'm going to cut a background square to go in the middle of that unit. So these are my four pieces that I'm going to need for my star. And I'm also going to need background for this middle part because these are going to go in reverse order. This has the dark pieces to the inside. This one will have the dark pieces going the opposite direction and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this first one will go up here like this. This one will go down here like this because these pieces will go to the inside because the star is actually going to be white. And so once I have this the way I want it and my star is like this, then I need to get a white center, right? And I'm going to need one, two, three, four that are dark because I'm going to be going the opposite. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want these little stars, if you notice on this page, to look like this. I want them to be color on the outside and white background on the inside because it's going to go in the center of my quilt. Okay? And so I'm going to trim these to the correct size, which is three and uh, one fourth for the size that I'm making. And I've already marked my ruler, which makes it easy to do. And so now I'm just going to trim these. So I'm going to start by trimming these right here. I'm going to follow my three and a quarter inch line and I'm just going to lay this right here and I'm going to trim on two sides. So I want that to be nice and straight. I made mine a lot bigger than what I needed, but that's okay because I like my half square triangles to be nice and exact. Then I'm going to flip that around and I'm going to line that up with that line, that very first line on this side and that very first line on that side and it's nice and straight on the diagonal, so now I can trim. And like I said, I normally don't like to have this much waste, but that's a little piece now that is perfect. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of my pieces. I'm just going to trim them down on two sides, lining that diagonal. And the reason I make them oversized is so that diagonal is exactly in the center of my block and not uh, off center because that enables me to match my half square triangles. A lot of people don't like half square triangles because they can be kind of picky to match. But if you follow the, the two at a time method and you make them slightly oversized, then you can trim them like this and then they always match perfectly and you don't have to suffer. Use a nice sharp uh, rotary blade. If you use a dull blade, you're more likely to cut yourself because you have to exert too much force on your, on your mat when you're cutting. So always use a nice sharp blade. Like I said, if your blade is acting kind of weird, just move that out of your way and get a nice sharp one. Like I said, line that up first in the middle before you do any trimming. And then you ensure that you're trimming the correct amount all the way around. There we go. Flip. And then I'm trimming on the other side. Same thing. I'm lining it up with this 
mark, I'm lining it up with this mark and I'm centering it. And so that ensures that all of my pieces are gonna match exactly the way I want them to match. And if you ever get a piece, a stubborn piece like this, just don't move your ruler and go back and, and cut it. And that's where that bunny ear was laying and it didn't wanna come out. Okay, three pieces, one more, I'm almost done. Doesn't take very long to get these pieces cut, but you have to be kind of patient and be kind of precise. All right. And you guys are gonna get to see this one as a work in progress, and I'm gonna give you guys updates. If you haven't noticed right behind me, if you guys look at this one, this is one of my UFOs that I'm almost done with, and that was the second easiest quilt ever, if you can see that back there in the background. I'm almost done with that one. It's almost ready for um, one more tiny row, and then I'm gonna put a little skinny border on it, and then I'm gonna take it downstairs to my little quilting cave and I'm gonna sew it up. And I'm probably gonna give that as a birthday gift to somebody in my family. All right, those are ready to go. And now we need the rest of the pieces. So now I need four Bs, right? I had four Bs that I needed. I need four Cs and then the middle C. So this middle C is background. So I need just a white one that's three and an eighth. And then I need four of my uh, blue fabric that are three and an eighth. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those and then put my uh, block together and it won't take me long. Let me trim this little string off of the side. So I need three and an eighth. I need four pieces. I'm gonna give that little tiny edge a press. I don't like for my fabrics to be, like I said, unpressed. Pressed fabric always cuts better. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna fold it in half, match those edges completely across the bottom and the top so that I get a nice straight edge. Some people like to cut out an entire quilt before they start. Um, I don't necessarily do that. I cut each block as I go because I don't have a ton of time to sew. I, I work full time as a teacher and I'm a full time grandma, which means I spend a lot of time with my grandkids. And so I, it's better for me to fold my pieces inside the box where I'm gonna be using them and just cut as I need them. Okay, so this is three and an eighth, which is what I need these finished pieces to be. So I'm lining that up. And I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna need a total of four pieces, so I'm gonna slide that down. If you have to cut like this, just fold this back, right? If you don't have a huge quilting space and you just have a small little space like what I'm using here, just roll um, your piece back and then keep cutting. So if you noticed, I just kind of rolled that back away from me and then I kept cutting because I had to stop. Um, rotary cutters are, uh, depends on what you want. I prefer Fiskars just because they tend to hold up pretty well. Um, but you can use anything that's uh, inexpensive. It depends on your uh, hand. That's a good question. I have, like you can see, I have this one that has a safety blade. But I like Fiskars. They've lasted a long time. Um, and they have the little safety uh, guard on them, which is what I like. So it depends on, on what you want. Uh, I use tools that are comfortable in my hands, so you'll have to maybe test out a friend of yours. If you have a friend that's a quilter, ask them if you can test out their rotary cutters to see which ones you like best. The same with rulers. You have to find a ruler that you like. All right, so I need four C's. So I have four of those, All right? Oftentimes, sometimes I'll cut an extra square if I want to and just put them in a scrap box, but I keep my pieces large like this. And so if this is gonna go in a scrap bin, it'll stay just like this, or I can always cut it down to like a two and a half inch strip, just like that, and just trim that off. But I just leave it just as is. 
and this will go in my scrap bin just the way it is. All right, now I need one of background. I need a single C for the middle. And so I'm just gonna cut over here. I'm gonna need more of those down the road, so I might as well cut a couple of them. And so I need three and one eighth for this one. It's a little teeny tiny measurement, so I'm just gonna line that up. And I'm gonna trim it straight on this side. I do not like um, pieces that are crooked, and so I always square up as I go. Now I'm gonna save this one because I'm gonna have to make more of these. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of them at a time. This will go in my scrap bin and I separate it from my pieces. So there you have it. So now all I have to do now is lay these four in the four corners. Because remember, this one is mirror imaged of what we did in the other one. So four corners gives me my twinkling uh, middle my little friendship star. And then I'm gonna lay this with the white to the inside. So this is gonna go like this. This is going to go like this with the white to the inside. This one is gonna go down like this. This one is gonna go up. And then this will have these pieces on the outside and then it'll have this in the middle. And so the background is on the inside and the color is on the outside because when you make your big star you're going to need to make the pieces on your big star match that piece so if you notice you're going to make one two three four half square triangles and then the middle of your star will be this one so when you make your big star, you're not going to make anything other than four half square triangles out of your big star fabric. And so this one, you just sew it like a nine patch and that's it. You're going to lay this across here, lay this across here, lay this across here, sew a quarter of an inch, open those up, and you are done with your little star and your little star will look like this, but a little bit bigger. This one is my small star with the dark to the center. This is the reverse, okay? And that's all you've gotta do to get started. Um, so if you want to do a practice block, you can. When you put this one together, we're gonna to be putting it together in um, grid. So we're gonna have like a fourth of a quilt, a fourth of a quilt, and a fourth of a quilt because if you notice, these pieces almost touch, so it's not like you can do one star and then make another star and then put them together. You have to actually connect those stars so that it makes that circle. All right, friends, this is all for now. Go ahead and get started cutting your pieces. If you have questions about the sizes that you wanna make, let me know. There's a lot of information here, so you're gonna have to decide um, what size quilt you're gonna make. And then make sure that you're using a scant quarter inch, which means just basically, once you sew it, it should measure a quarter inch. Your seam should measure one fourth of an inch from the edge to the thread. And so a scant just means that you're sewing just a hair or one thread short of a quarter inch so that when you press, your pieces measure exactly what they should measure. All right, friends. Have fun getting started on your friendship, your circle of friends. This is called the Superstar. I made this for a friend of mine named Rachel. I've done a bunch of math. Use the quilt calculator if you want to. Um, if you want to make this totally scrappy, you can. But have a good time, and I will see you guys at 6 o'clock because we're going to be working on the next uh, Mystery Star. So if you go to uh, my website and you click on... The Mystery Stars uh, block, you're gonna click on this one that says Mystery Stars. And the next block that we're gonna be making is this one. Let me see, handout seven. You guys should be making the Twinkle Star with me later on and it looks like this. 
So if you haven't downloaded that, you can go over to the website and download that. Um, I hope that you understood all of the instructions, read through the handouts carefully, and we will be working together on this quilt. I will see you at six for the next Mystery Stars. And as you can see behind me, I've been really busy working on my stars. So you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you guys later. Go grab something to eat and I will see you at six. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Bye everybody.